I'd always done art but hadn't really taken it seriously until somebody reached out to me, a wonderful teacher, um, just fabulous, Mark Potter was his name, and um, uh, he really helped me take it, take my, my own work more seriously. So that launched me, and then I, when I went to college, I went to Yale, and I, met, I, I majored in painting at Yale, and then got a Master's in Fine Arts at American University. I have found that early on is a great time to experiment and do all kinds of different things. Years ago I worked at Harvard Medical School as my day job and I got into this whole series of, of monotypes and drawings that were done while I was looking through a microscope, which is like this whole science bend. I had, you know, little invertebrates and things that, I, and they were very interesting paintings, but now I really just do landscapes. So when I'm standing out in nature, I, um, I'm really responsive to that rushing of space as it goes back and then the sky coming up overhead. And I'm hoping in the paintings to capture just a little bit of that space. And you can see many of my landscape paintings are quite large. You experience those as a viewer in a very different way. You have a relationship with that landscape. You feel as if you could step into it. And that's important to me. That, I mean, I really want people to feel like they're there, to feel the sense of this beauty. I even teach in my classes. I'm teaching a plein air class at SAGE coming up in September. I, th I think it really is important for people to take some lessons when they're uh, when they're learning art and to improve and expand their skills or just learn in the beginning. And I've actually started a website um, and it's also a YouTube channel called DIY Art Lessons and that is um, and DIYArtLessons.com and that is a way for people to just get you know basic art lessons get started. And I I always teach you know take that time to sit and feel and look and let the landscape speak to you and pull out, you know, what is the uniqueness of this place? What am I trying, what story am I trying to tell? A painting is really interesting because it's almost like a science experiment where I feel you don't, you shouldn't know what it will look like in the end. You're discovering along the way what it's going to look like. I'll let the painting speak and the painting say, no, this is what this is what the painting needs, and then it'll become become that. You know, it's it's interesting when I do a painting, I fall in love with the place that I'm painting. I get to know it so well that I have this special relationship with the the place, and then I go back to the place. And I'm like, oh yeah, I like this this place. And when and when I'm painting, I'll even put an X like on a rock or something, so that when I come back to keep working, because I work on them over a period of time, especially the large ones. Um, I'll do the large paintings directly from observation, plein air, um, but you know I can't do them in an hour or two, so I'm coming back day after day, um, and I have to stand in exactly the same place, uh, or the drawing changes. So. I I just put a little X on a rock or something. So if you ever are out in the landscape, you find an X. That's that's what it was. <laughs> so. This fall is both my husband and I. My husband is also an artist, and um, we are going to be in the Brinton 101 show that they have every year. Um, so that's a that's a really fun show. If you if you've been there before, you know it has a whole variety of artists, and everyone has about three small works. And um, it's just a great variety and a, a, good, a good show to swing by and make sure you catch down at the Brinton.